Now that we have a minimum variance frontier calculated from the previous episode, it's possible to determine the portfolio construction that produces the minimum possible risk. And this point marks the start of the efficient frontier. Today, I do this in Excel for three assets. Stay tuned. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. If you're a talented trader looking to attract investor capital to your strategies, DarwinX is the fastest way for you to do this. We enable traders to raise third party investor capital and then charge success fees on high watermark profits. Additionally, DarwinX itself invests in its traders with our seed capital allocation program that allocates up to 90 million euros per year in successful trading strategies. So if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link here or you can find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. The portfolio with the minimum possible risk, which is sometimes referred to as the global minimum variance portfolio, is a key portfolio to be able to calculate. That's because it marks the start of the efficient frontier. So let's make a start in Excel and calculate it today. So this is where we left things last time and we'd plotted the portfolio standard deviations along the x-axis here and the portfolio expected returns along the y-axis. And we did that for many combinations of different percentage weightings for each of the three stocks, Cisco, Pfizer, and American Express. And we noted how this was fundamentally different to the chart you get when only using two assets. And here we almost have a visualization of a surface in three dimensions. And that's because we've introduced this additional degree of freedom from the third asset. And so, as I said before, what we're going to do in this session is find the portfolio construction that has the minimum level of risk. So in other words, on the most left hand side here of the pattern that we see. So in order to do that precisely, we're going to use the Excel data solver and I've put together this template here to assist us. So we have the different weightings here for Cisco, Pfizer and Amex and we're going to alter these using the Excel solver in order to minimize this value that we're going to calculate here, the portfolio standard deviation. Now to calculate that, we can simply copy the formula across from the table on the left. And by clicking on that, we can see that that's now adapted to the various weights for the three assets. And we can see it using the relevant values over here on the left. And likewise for the expected return, we can just copy over the formula here and likewise, see that's now using those new weightings. Okay, so it's a little bit more complex than when we did this for just two assets, because there are a few more constraints that we need to be able to use. So let's go ahead and open the solver. So our objective function is going to be the portfolio standard deviation, because we're trying to minimize this particular value. So we need to select minimum here and instead of just changing one value as we did before we're going to select this range of values here so that excel knows that all three of these can be changed but we now need to add a number of constraints in order to make sure that these values that excel chooses are valid so the first one is that each of these values must be less than 100%. So in other words, have a value less than one. And I'm going to do that for each of the three weightings. Each 
equally, we're going to say that they all have to be above 0%. So we're not going to allow the short selling context here. So this is greater or equal to zero. Likewise, for Pfizer, And finally, Amex. But there is, of course, one further constraint, and that is that the portfolio always adds up to 100%. So we're also going to say that this value here must be equal to 1. So we now have our objective function set up. We know which values we're going to be changing and we have all of our seven required constraints. So if we click on solve, we can see that a solution has been found here. So we'll request to keep that solution. And we can see that in order to minimize the risk of this portfolio, we need just over 54% in Cisco stock just over 25% in Pfizer and 20 in American Express. Now, just to make sure we've not made any mistakes here, we're going to plot this value here onto our chart and we should be expecting to see it somewhere around here. So let's add a new data series, which we will call the Global Minimum Variance Portfolio. And the X value is going to be the portfolio standard deviation here. And the Y value, the expected return here. So if we click on OK and take a look at our chart. Indeed, we can see the orange point right here on the leftmost side of the frontier. And so we have the assurance now that this is being calculated correctly and this is the portfolio we would require in order to give us that minimized risk. Now in the next episode, we're going to take this a little bit further and instead of looking for that minimal risk portfolio, we're going to look for the optimal portfolio. And by optimal, I mean the optimal ratio of return versus risk. Thank you once again for your time. If you're interested in finding out more about the services that DarwinX provides to traders, then you can click on the DarwinX logo at the bottom right here. But now, until next time, trade safe.